Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the Libra New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. We continue our work gathering every month around this time to bring our group focus to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Today we focus on goal nine and our presenters Sheldon Hughes and co-discussants Dot Maver and Martin Deezer. Welcome. Over to you, Dot. Thank you, Alexander. And yes, our focus is UN Sustainable Development Goal 9, build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation at this time of the new moon. We gather once a month at the new moon to focus on a shared vision for the common good that is expressed through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. We participate in group meditation on these formulated thought forms of solution that address the issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. These SDG thought forms help create physical conditions leading to transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Through this meditation, we energize and magnetize the vision to be radiatory and to reach as many people as possible in order that the sustainable development goals might manifest through many actions. We use the opportunity of the new moon cycles and available astrological energies to distribute, radiate, and anchor intention on the physical plane. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation, and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. And we welcome Sheldon Hughes, if you will kindly take us through an alignment and then share with us. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dot. <clears throat> Hello, friends. It's good to be with you on this particular day and during these times. So as part of our alignment, we want to remember that we are we are still in the full moon of Libra. And we show this particular symbol as a way of conveying that the 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 notion that all these different lines of force are brought together into the center. And as we can move together toward the center and through the center, we end up in a place much closer to our elder brothers and sisters and on the edge of the shambolic place of peace. So now let us imagine that we stand together, linked heart to heart. Throughout this group, and all of the groups that are that meditate at this time and are concerned about these, these goals, this particular aspect of humanity's expression today, that we are linked in an overpowering love, which is always present. And as a result of <clears throat> this connection, we are able to participate and work in this great field of endeavor. Today with the new moon, <clears throat> we are in a sense, joined by the other half of this of Libra expression, the sign Aries, the light of life itself, and using this as, a, as both a reminder and hopefully as much as possible a felt sense of the power of this life aspect that is present, that we have access to, and that we can, by both thinking about it and expressing it in various ways, use the life aspect to move forward 
in the process of realizing these goals. One of the symbols that we may call to mind at different points in time in our work is that we also are able, as we move into that, on that noble middle path into this, toward this place of peace, we stand in a kind of dome where all things can become both clearer in their relationship to each other and we see clearly what can move forward. So I'd ask us now to imagine that, that we move as a group to a place just above the earth, almost as if we are looking out at through, through the windows of one of these satellites, perhaps the space, the space station, looking down upon the earth, I've seen this picture many times in our minds, starting in 69, with the return from the moon. But what we see as we look down upon the earth, we see these great blue oceans. We see land masses that are, that are, that are visible to us. As we get closer, we see places where there are places of, that are lit up at night, dark at night. And as we come a little bit closer, we can even see some aspects of, of humanity uh, in various expressions. So it's important that we, we attempt to see, as the hierarchy sees, the picture whole, so that any one of these goals that we take can fit into the larger whole. And in any level of its realization nourishes that whole. So this particular image that we have now, biosphere, land and water, you know, <laughs> most visible things that we see, all the societal kinds of things that have to do with us as, as humans, and then <clears throat> economy, as we say here at the top, those particular goals that, that help the flow of, of funds and, and effort to work, work between. So have, with this picture in mind, we want to now focus on the goal number nine. And it has three parts to it. And sustainable industrialization being the first part that I'd like to say just a few words about. As by way of background, um, <clears throat> I've spent a little more than 40 years working with business organizations, you might say, um, trying to build what we call values-based or soul-based cultures at various levels in the organization. So maybe there's a few more thoughts in this particular aspect. But the notion here is that any, any process of industrialization has to be both sustainable on the one hand, and it also has to have purpose and values, which um, uh, benefit the good of the whole. So the first one that I would like to have us take a look at, let's see here, um, will be just as, as a, as a these are notes here, the World Business Academy. I came across this particular group in 1987, 88, long time ago. And what caught my imagination here was their, their notion here was business should take responsibility for the whole and not just be about profit. In more recent years, when Alder Bob Grubico was one of the founders along with Willis Harmon, Ronaldo's still with us, Willis has moved on. Um, the more recent focus here is the future of business is making the future its business. So this is an organization doing a lot of things on a worldwide basis, much in Southern California. What I want to mention here is one of their recent creations is a daily optimist expression. This should, this should be an innovation idea, but uh, this is a, a, a paper that comes out every day that has taken from all over the world different kinds of experiments and um, realizations that are going on with better humanity. So I want to make sure that make sure that you see the, um, the way to get to this, those of you who get the slides later on. 
So that's the World Business Academy, kind of the beginning of things for me. And then not beginning, but the, the notion of business expanding into its larger role. Okay, next, I'd like to say a few words about those companies that have formed a group called Conscious Capitalism. And um, if you go into the background, but I think I just want to say a couple things about, about what this is. Uh, this is now a, a major movement in the United States. And um, they're based around four principles that were put together back 2009, 2010. And this has gone on to, to spread to include a number of organizations uh, on a worldwide basis. The founding notion of this, though, is that purpose is the main reason for business, the purpose being the good of the whole. Profit comes last, right? So just to go around these four principles very simply, organizations, businesses of all kinds need to be clear about how what they do serves the greater good, then has to serve all the stakeholders. If it's a public company, shareholders are one of seven or eight, which I won't name, but the customers, the environment, a whole series of stakeholders have to be equally served for the purpose of conscious capitalism. The leadership is based upon servant leadership, the book by that name, for any of you who are interested in this. And the culture is basically one of, of high values. We might call them, we would call them soul values, but they're different values, honesty, trust, teamwork, etc. And that adds up to right human relations in the organization itself. If you've been a part of some of an organization like this or or even even a small one, um, these are vital uh, purpose driven um, businesses today where profit finally is 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 used for the promotion of the purpose. OK, and the last one I'd like to mention just as an example, is a group that called Humanities Team, started by a Silicon Valley entrepreneur, Steve Farrell, uh, who has always had a spiritual bent, um, built a couple of companies, sold them back in the 90s, and um, was able to accumulate some money. Um, Neil Donald Walsh uh, called him and said, hey, can you help us with something? And so what, what uh, Steve has done is build what he calls humanities team. This is a big group of people, several hundred thousand people around the world. And it's a more spiritually oriented movement in business whose purpose is to communicate and demonstrate the timeless truth that we are all one. So they come at this from that particular angle. And there are two expressions of humanities team I'd like to mention. Uh, one is what they call the conscious business initiative or enterprise. This means it's inner guided. And this is very much how you take the values and principles, your spiritual teachings, and apply them to business. The Conscious Business Initiative is a little more standard business, but it does have the purpose up there. This is more for people who are, are being trained to work inside organizations, both as employees, but also as consultants, to um, help business realize uh, its, its, its role in making the world one. The other part of this I want to mention for today is on October 24th, just a few a couple of weeks into the future, UN's birthday, they are putting on a worldwide global oneness day, which is unreal in terms of the scope they have with panels and what's happening. Maybe you have a chance to get, get this particular uh, uh, web link down here. This is worthwhile tuning into. Uh, they do great work and they have the panelists in science, uh, in business, of course, um, in you know, environmentalism, uh, religion, etc. So, but their global oneness is, is one of the larger demonstrations, I think, of UN birthday that I'm aware of. Okay, so that was really about sustainable industrialization, just, just some thoughts. And what I'm trying to convey uh, in these remarks is that we have already with us so many experiments, uh, active more than pilot projects, active organ organisms that are operating for the greater good. As we notice these organiz organisms and organizations, the, the pieces that need to be put together are already present. That's what I want to say. Okay, infrastructure. Just a word about this. Um, for me, this infrastructure means it, it ties things together so they actually manifest on the physical plane. Very seventh ray activity here. 
And also, it holds things together when they when they, they, they break down. Because when things break down, fear arises. Fear arises, hate arises, and we're back into the usual separative mess that we see in different parts of the planet today. Mm-hmm. So two simple, there are so many, but just two simple thoughts here. A group has just started working with the United Nations called the World Benchmarking Alliance. And what they're going to do in the next few years is, is put together the kinds of rankings that, that will help organizations. They're hoping for 2,000 organizations to sign up so that they can benchmark their own progress with the SDGs. Now, this is a voluntary effort, but it's a very important one in terms of linking together companies that are doing this kind of work, working on the SDGs, sharing their information, so the world itself begins to begins to demonstrate its movement uh, toward this, this, this greater goal. The second one, uh, we were watching a 60 Minutes episode recently, episode 53, by the way, called The Dutch Solution. And this is the, that part of infrastructure. This was a, a story about a man from, from the Netherlands, uh, Henrik Ovink, who basically is going around the world saying, look, when you have a flood and all these things break down, you don't just rebuild it again and then hope it gets stronger. You do something new and something different. So he points to the Netherlands, which is, which is basically going to be always flooded. They know it. It's only going to get bigger. So they have built their whole, all the, all the towns and farmlands in such a way that that the water will not, will not create catastrophe. For water, yes, but basically, it it mitigates the the. We're not going to change climate change in a short time. We're going to have all the things people talk about on the on the on the, on the, the fear side. It's going to be real, but we can mitigate the the breakdown that takes place as a result of this kind of infrastructure solution. A delightful man, um, a great idea. He's talking to people all over the world now. He's got a lot of support. So, yeah, this is this is just intelligent infrastructure. It's not. It's it's a it's a kind of. But anyway, it's worthwhile. If you find that 60 Minutes episode 53, this will be fun to watch. And the last thing I want to mention here is, is the, the importance of innovation. We, we know this, but this is not just, oh gosh, how do I say this? It's not just expressing yourself creatively. It's innovation for the greater good. And um, so just several examples I just want to mention here. Um, for lack of a better term, the work of William McDonough, his, his partner in Germany, Michael Braungart, many of you know this, but um, in sustainable design, this was the first person I ever came across about 10, 12 years ago, designing organiza- designing structures, physical architectural structures, and now materials, shoes, clothing, pipes, that are based upon the principles of nature and are completely recyclable. It's cradle to grave, it just, it just, they are continuously recycled. So all I want to say is this is an a extraordinary person, and the work he's done could be captured on this particular link. It was a talk he gave at Stanford some years ago. He received an award for the, what he's been doing. And um, if you get the slide, you can go to it in this other way as well. But his work has fostered a, a real change in the work of architects and how they design things so that they are – well, sustainable. <laughs> it's based upon the principles of nature. Okay. The next one, yes, it does go back a bit to the uh, the financial side of things. What's happening is an organization called Just Capital. It was founded by a billionaire, Paul Tudor Jones, but it's got it's now got its own legs, and it has dance with Goldman Sachs. Most of you know this is a major, major organ- business organization, financial organization in New York City, probably one of the strongest in the world. Mm-hmm. And they have put together a new electronic transfer of funds measuring tool that will measure good or just companies. So if you say, okay, I want to, we want to get better as a company, what company should we should we invest our money in? And this is primarily for pension funds and and large donors. Um, they have put this together, and the, what makes is it's now on the New York Stock Exchange. This is a this is a big piece from from the angle we're talking about here of using these kinds of measures so we can direct people to um, the companies, the organizations that are building the future. And the last thing I want to mention is um, delightful work. Andrews. Some of you know, know, know Hazel, she's been with us. 
from England and the States for since the 80s. So it's been a few years now. She has a, does many things, but has a wonderful program called Ethical Markets TV. Get on, get on that. <laughs> Look at any one of those things. There are so many episodes she's done, but there's one in particular we saw recently. Episode, uh, was it 819? <laughs> um, a, dis a discussion with uh, a man, chief scientist, Dennis Bushnell from NASA, talking about investing in saltwater agriculture. I won't go into too much detail here, but what he's saying in effect is, look, we now know how to work with salt water in a way that we can grow plants in salt water, and you can plant them in the desert so that the, the, the arid, that the deserts can be used for food. And he goes into this in such a charming fifth ray way. <laughs> he says, look, we can solve five of the, these SDGs, problems of land, of water, of food, of energy, because all this could be done with, uh, with the, uh, all the solar resources and climate change. So we and try to take a look at this, this particular episode. And it's, it's you go to Ethical Markets TV and you, in that search box, you type in 819. So I guess what I want to say one more time is that the point behind all of this is to say that we have already so many solutions. And there are, there are some that haven't been squashed or hidden or, you know, by either the government or by, by companies. Um, they are out there. And the more we look for and we see these things and we promote their movement forward, um, the faster we're going to move uh, toward the accomplishment of these SDGs. So this is, a, this is an attempt to, to bring some of the life energy, you might say, of Aries. I am Aries born, by the way. So. So it is. I do have Libra, Libra Moon. So these are two good signs for me to just be speaking about these things. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, we move on to our next phase. Mm, thank you so much, Sheldon. Uh, inspiring, informative, and you speak of infrastructure in a way that uh, lets us know we're actually moving through this all system breakdown. Uh, with a simultaneous all systems breakthrough. Thank mm. you. And Martin, if you, uh, Martin Deezer will share next if you will comment and uh, please share your thoughts about SDG 9 at this moment. Thank you, Dot. Thank you, Sheldon, for, for this thoughts. Uh, I also found them very interesting and found it in experience uh, gives, I think it gives us like a particular value, like a special value. So I think we can discuss uh, uh, deeply and, and very useful in this regard. Uh, just a few thoughts about um, like an opening and then I, I go to, to what you said, Sheldon. Um, approaching to this issue, I was thinking about the plan. Uh, what we, the, the spiritual, the esoteric people, we call the plan, you know, with capital letters. And I wonder, uh, in, in conversation with several friends, uh, perhaps uh, I found out that sometimes we have a, an abstract vision of the plan, which may be too much abstract. Uh, what Sheldon was saying about uh, solutions, how many solutions we have in the world today. Uh, probably uh, we had these sustainable development goals and the question is there uh, up to which point are we linking well these uh, goals uh, what we will call the plan in terms of humanity of course because the plan is uh, is we know is wider and also comprises the planet and uh, several other kingdoms but uh, as as for our uh, focus today um, I think uh, further work could be done in terms of relating uh, these ideas, these uh, concrete ideas of the goals with several adjectives and, and complex texts, which are, of course, very negotiated, very intellectual. But at the same time, uh, we have the plans in our hands. Uh, we have the plans clearly outlined and with the support of many nations around the world, including the General Assembly of the UN. So, well, uh, I always celebrate when we focus on, on, on these topics. And continue with this, uh, just uh, as I remember in the next uh, slide, we have uh, the idea of the Antakarana as uh, 
uh, probably if we consider humanity as a whole, we could see perhaps uh, the goals as uh, like a personality expression or a, a way to approach the soul of humanity. You know? How you, probably if we if we treat ourselves well, if we try to purify ourselves, uh, which could be also read like a good industrialization, uh, to have good infrastructure, to take care of the environment. Uh, well, we may have a, a better soul expression no? and humanity will be happier. So uh, going specifically to goal number nine, we have uh, what well, the topic Sheldon talked about. And uh, in the next slide, there are the, just four qualities which could be useful to, to put into practice. Uh, to have the, the necessary will uh, to introduce a, a quality of daring or uh, and to see how we can uh, esoteric, I, I mean, this is from the esoteric perspective, right? Uh, how we can introduce a quality so that people can dare more uh, into the unknown. Because of course we have a, a structure which has a lot of inertia and uh, it is always easier uh, to remain in what we know and, and, and not to focus uh, in other things because it's risky, of course. And we are here talking not just about uh, wishful wishes or, or ideas, but also about money and Sheldon was saying about fears and about many things which are attached to matter. So supporting positive steps and trying to ignite the wheels is probably will, will help us to uh, to go forward with uh, this goal. And also education, I wonder, uh, we hear politicians talking about uh, infrastructure, industrialization, innovation. Uh, I, I personally would, would like to see more uh, these sustainable goals, sustainable development goals in the agenda of the politicians of the world. And uh, including, of course, uh, innovation and in practical ways. For example, this percentage of the gross domestic product dedicated to science, innovation, uh, and uh, in infrastructure. And uh, of course, uh, we have the issue of money. Uh, it's not easy to make this change. And uh, well, uh, we, we come from a world in which uh, many of these decisions are money-based. Money so uh, probably if there is no profit on it, uh, could be difficult uh, to encourage them to, to make a change. I think, as Sheldon was saying, uh, there are uh, very positive new ideas, which is probably the work of the hierarchy to introduce into the minds of the businessmen and on the people in companies that it is possible to have, uh, as you said, uh, purpose and values, values plus sustainability and the transformation of individualism into the good of the whole. And uh, that's, I think, is a very powerful archetype that we need to deepen and, and to ground more into the hearts and minds of people. And uh, as for the last uh, quality of harmony, well, it derives uh, from, from the last because, uh, uh, of course, uh, it is easy to innovate and to, uh, and to produce new ideas, uh, but there's also much behind. And, uh, when we have uh, already built structures, uh, well, we need to be very careful when we destroy them, non, not to make a very uh, sudden or cruel uh, transition. So um, I just wanted to add that I loved uh, this idea uh, published by Forbes about the World Benchmaking Alliance. Uh, I also looked in, in this uh, magazine Forbes, I found that uh, uh, well, they are, they, are, uh, th they are saying that uh, these goals, they provide also an investment opportunity. They talked about $12 trillion. So it's an economic way to, to see it. And well, I think we have to be very open to, to, to that dimension, trying, trying to embrace both uh, profit and uh, idealism and the, the, the purity of the heart because uh, it's what we have today and if we do not embrace if we do not uh, uh, include uh, this dimension into our own hearts how can we expect that uh, companies and businessmen from all over the world will do it 
So I think it's uh, the other the other side of the uh, of the discussion here. So well, well, I if I have some more questions, but please uh, uh, thank you for for the openings and for listening to this. Mm, thank you, Martin. You know, as as you share and both of you, Sheldon and Martin, have really talked about a solutions oriented approach uh, with with these sustainable development goals, which is we know what is needed, right? And values based cultures, Sheldon, that you you were mentioning, and uh, this Dutch solution. And to, when we talk about soul ex expression, Martin, as we talk about the SDGs, it, it seems what we're really talking about is a blueprint for a culture of peace. Uh, if yeah. we were to define peace as living in right relationship with self, others, and all life. And I, it, I find it very heartening as both of you are sharing I mean, this goal, this particular goal is so urgent, right? And it, it speaks to um, ethical values that lend themselves through all the goals, actually, for the healing of this beautiful planet we all call home. And I find it heartening that we are moving towards local solutions, mm -hmm. more and more, local, mm -hmm. regional, et cetera. And yeah, the, thank you for that slide, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. So I wonder if we could have a, a brief conversation among the three of us, and Alexander, perhaps you want to share a word about this solutions-oriented approach uh, through the lens of SDG 9. And we'll open it up to the full group in a moment. And I note that Martha is with us. Martha, you had a number of thoughts uh, about this that you shared with us and uh, the complexity uh, within this goal, as Martha has shared, uh, makes our service in meditation ever more urgent. And Martin, as you intimated, maybe we can talk about that a little bit too, how we it, it really is a co-creative emergent design process we're talking about and we cannot start from the outside in. Well, you know, Dot, just to, to um, I'll pick up on a, <clears throat> what you just said in a moment, but as, as Martin was talking, I was thinking about this, all of these goals, um, put together at the United Nations, that the UN is operating here for humanity as a kind of a global brain <laughs> and um, analyzing what, what needs to be done and then setting the kind of goals together. So so uh, and the fact that we've reached that particular stage uh, of development, that we do have a kind of global brain, maybe not operating at its fullest potential, obviously, today, but, but attempting to do so, attempting to get hold is is enlivening as far as I'm concerned. So when we hear uh, talk about all the problems that we have, and on the other hand, the fact that there's nothing really to fear but fear itself, I think just the fact that we have, um, that we come this far, that there's this amount of energy that's gone into this, and all the different organizations, organisms around the world that are supporting work in this field, if we could add this up, uh, I think we would all be uh, not only thrilled, but but just um, humbled at, at how far we've come. <laughs> now there's a long ways to go, and that's what we see in the papers. But that that's what that's what occurs to me as I as we as we um, as I just was hearing a little bit of what Martin was saying, and and the work that we do on ourselves as evolving souls um, puts us into a perfect we're perfectly fit for bringing people together on the harmony side, of bringing the life energy, the, the, the living energy that, that, that can make things take place. And, and, and the kind of, hopefully, the practical outworkings uh, today of linking all of these segments together. So I'm, I'm um, yeah, what to say? I guess I am optimistic, however, I think it's true. <laughs> yes, I totally agree. Um, yeah, go sorry. ahead, Martin. No, that uh, uh, if perhaps if we look back uh, 100 years behind, 
we didn't have all this uh, white vision and also clearly formulated and with the support, at least the nominal support of, of the different states of the world. So yes, there's been steady progress. Uh, if we look back to the 70s, uh, there, we were just beginning to discuss uh, environment and whether it was correct or not to protect environment. So there, there, there's been progress. And um, of course, I think we could uh, improve in terms of uh, central organization or direction of things. But I, I also think that we, we need to be, as uh, Sheldon was saying, to trust the life energy and to trust this inspiration that will produce, will radiate through us. Not exactly will allow us to direct everything with our minds. No? I mean, as you were saying, that uh, uh, this movement towards uh, local initiatives. Uh, probably the energy shall be there and uh, building this reservoir and then letting it just radiate and connecting with that. We'll make, we may arrive solutions here and there and uh, maybe without even knowing that. Yeah. Yeah, well well said. It, it, it seems to me as, as we are talking, I appreciate both of you holding this, again, this solutions oriented approach. It's, it's easy for any of us to get caught in the, um, the free-floating anxiety that's out here, right? Right now on the planet and regardless of what a country, our country of origin is. But as, as we're sharing right now, there's a great spirit of cooperation in operation on the planet. And we see it at, at all levels. We're seeing it with uh, water sharing rights between countries. And, and we know now, uh, we have proof over decades now that when two countries sign a contract for water sharing rights, they don't go to war together. They figure it out because, right, water is life. And so we have this growth of relationships uh, regionally, country to country, and certainly, I mean, it's only a, a matter of decades, this sister cities and uh, the exchange, uh, Russia and the United States, uh, generationally, maybe two generations uh, for that one, but we are watching and the, the, this growth of relationships between and among us. And I, I think that's the story, as you're saying, Sheldon, the story to be told, and we really assist one another in these kinds of conversations when we share on that level. So yeah, thank you both. I wonder if we might open it up, Alexander, to the group and invite comments. And yeah, absolutely. Um, as, as always, we uh, just ask you to use the function, raise your hand. It's on the control panel, and we will unmute you to hear your voice contributing to the group circle as we prepare for the meditation. And while we're waiting for those comments, I wanted just to add um, a small um, contribution. Uh, thinking about the goal nine, uh, two words in this industry innovation infrastructure, two of, the, uh, of those words speak to me in terms of as a fourth and the seventh ray. Innovation, it's the power of the creativity put in the uh, focused in a way to address a specific need to to come up with a new solution and the infrastructure is that seventh ray how we create living infrastructures that allow us to sustain together as a collective as a society uh, in this challenging environment and uh, I want to share one example uh, of that uh, large scale innovating in innovations in industry and infrastructure in uh, New York City, uh, the mayor's office of sustainability uh, earlier this year came up with the uh, New York City carbon challenge. Uh, it was a, a citywide um, Actually, it was international uh, competition where uh, different groups and individuals were called to contribute their ideas how to help New York City to meet a uh, sustainable development uh, agenda. And 
as a result of that competition, there was a one project. Uh, I don't remember from where, somewhere from Europe, a group uh, uh, came up with a project to install charging stations for electrical vehicles along the lamp posts around the city, and so that will be happening within the next year or two. And uh, after that, there were two more challenges that the city uh, conducted, uh, and uh, a result of every of that challenge was coming up with a really brilliant, innovative solution. And now uh, this uh, line of creating those uh, competition for innovative ideas that the city shared with everyone around the world, inviting to create the same similar challenges in uh, different locales. So it's it's interesting model of bringing that creative a potential uh, the power of the fourth ray to solve the collective problems mm. yeah thank you for that it makes me think of international cities for peace actually yeah very nice i see that martha has her hand up alexander okay i will unmute martha For some reason, uh, it doesn't show in my control panel a raised hand. So if you raise your hand and not been unmuted, please uh, write in the control uh, in the chat that you need to be unmuted. For some reason, the technology is not very uh, very cooperating today. Marta, you are muted on your end. Please unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Uh, First of all, thank you very, very much for such a, an informative and enlightened uh, focus on this, as we said, important issue. What brought to mind when I was hearing e each of you speak is this the uh, cumulative work. I'm, I'm going to guess that the three of you have probably contributed 150 years to what is now being touted around the SDGs. But it was actually your energy and the, um, the the stitching together of so many, many projects that are going on. It brought to mind that we haven't reached the tipping point yet. And I'm not so sure that what will be achieved um, Martha? So this brings to mind, as Martha finds her way back to us, always connected, hearts united always, but as she finds her way back to us through the auditory here, of what you were saying, Martin, about the plan and the, the urgency and sometimes pushing, uh, you know, I'm even mindful of the uh, conflict and, and decision, right? The principles, mm -hmm. conflict and decision, and not to force a decision uh, prior to dealing with the conflict. And it seems we're in that stage where we are really stepping, putting one foot in front of the other with solutions and finding our way through this. Yes, yeah, sometimes I wonder, uh, because there are, there are a lot of uh, things we can do as servers for humanity, of course. And the easiest way is to do what we feel in our hearts. But also there is uh, some level of coordination. Uh, we have this affinity with the spirit for the spiritual teachings and for the subjective work. So mm -hmm. I wonder uh, what can our contribution be in terms of, uh, for example, this in particular, the goals, the, the sustainable development goals. And uh, uh, well, um, Perhaps uh, making space, as you were saying, uh, so not, not to, to, to keep uh, the motivation and uh, the real sense of, of need present of other people of the planet, but at the same time to, to, to leave space for silence, for, 
meditation for uh, creative thinking because that also needs peace and needs uh, time and needs uh, this sense of infinity so yes i think that's also a, a very important dimension to keep in mind mm -hmm. i just i want to mention just one other thought too that martha brought to mind about not yet reached a tipping point and I think for sure, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a news watcher too, and um, <clears throat> I love watch the BBC and pick up some of these programs and that kind of stuff. We haven't. Yet at the same time, just a personal comment, and this goes back to what you were talking about earlier, Martin. Um, sorry, folks, for those of you who are not, you're lucky to be not so embroiled in this affair in America with uh, <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh and the whole judgeship. But what, what, what what's occurred to me when that thing was partially settled the way it is from a higher perspective it's almost as if mine said okay that's it that's it now we know what has to happen and Don, i i, I got to go right back to gender equality that particular goal but frame it from the point of view of we <laughs> we talked about this but public opinion uh, is just being pushed to the fore right now to say N -n -n no more of this nonsense on a, on any level and and that just feels so strong in me, not like it must happen, but it is happening. So that, that, that's, that's what I get, that on another level, it's we've, we've crossed a tipping point here, and that, that despoilation that, that we saw go on on, on two different levels, um, the Supreme Court on the one hand and also women on the other, um, the tipping point has been reached. So we'll see how it plays out in the news and 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 votes that come up here in the next month or so. But I, I feel a very feel somewhat passionately about this right now. <clears throat> mm. It makes me mindful of a, a a block of wood I have <clears throat> above me as I sit at my desk, and burned into that it says we are all faced with a series of great opportunities. <laughs> brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, there you have it. <laughs> so wondering if, if anyone else would uh, be willing actually to add their voice to the conversation today uh, to perhaps share a solution uh, around infrastructure, inclusive and sustainable, promoting inclusive and sustainable industrialization or fostering innovation, or want to share a comment about the value of, of this work that we find ourselves called to. And I, I want to mention triangles for a moment. Speaking of infrastructure, uh, we have an etheric infrastructure that many of us support and everyone is invited to support by joining with two other people uh, through the Triangles Network. And every day, our uh, triangles connect and visualize uh, light, love, purpose flowing through the Triangle Network in the etheric grid of the planet, and then sound the great invocation, which uh, is a wonderful world peace prayer. So another... Uh, infrastructure, resilient infrastructure that allows for inspiration and communication, both vertically and horizontally. That, uh, I've unmuted Iris. Hi. Hi, Thank Iris. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for such a wonderful presentation. And Dot, you uh, bring to mind, um, I was just going to mention about the infrastructure and relate it to triangles, uh, but I have a couple facts here and the thing, the interesting thing about these goals is that um, part of or a big part of us reaching these goals are the targets and the uh, use of facts, these this yeah. information. And the unfortunate part is there's a lag time. We're like a couple of years behind usually. So hopefully that that's getting better. Uh, but these facts are from 2015. And it says that 2.5 billion still lack basic sanitation mm -hmm. and 1.5 billion had no access to phone services. And 
2.5 billion had no reliable 24 hour electric supply. But all these are prerequisite for achieving, you know, social, economic, and ecological goals. And then while 95% of people in developing countries are covered by mobile cellular signals, only 23% of the rural population have access to a reliable internet connection. And I think that's a, a really a growing area that um, pro can provide a lot of help. I remember a friend of mine had an NGO um, years back when they still had blackberries <laughs> and she set up in Africa uh, like a library of these blackberries and they programmed them with um, women's, uh, you know, uh, information about how to give birth and problems and what you might in encounter and things like that. So. As an example, a young boy might come in, his mother might be ready to have her baby and there's no doctor around. So he might come in and bring a donkey and leave the donkey, take one of these blackberries that are already programmed with all this information and take it back. And they would use it to help give birth, especially if there was like a miscarriage or uh, inverted birth or something like that. And so then he would bring it back and then get his donkey back. But these wonderful technologies that we have just with cell phones are unbelievable. The banking and on and on. Anyway, I'll stop here, but thank you. Mm, thank you, Iris. Yeah. For all of us, again, holding, naming what it is we are dealing with and yet staying focused through that solutions oriented lens where we take steps in that direction. Thank you. Dot, I just want to add on to something um, that was spoken about earlier. I think Martin raised it, somebody else, Martha, and then finally what Iris was talking about too. And this is the whole notion of what does profit mean? <laughs> and this is the economic side of profit. And, you know, um, it seems to me that what we have here are, just, as somebody was pointing out, so many different um, profitable opportunities to invest in for the future, to build the future. So if you listen to this uh, sustainable agriculture thing that uh, the mass society has talked about, Dennis Bushnell, um, what they're saying is there's there's trillion the dollar opportunity here to to start something. You know, and I'm not trying to make the large amount of money for one person be the goal. People to to begin to invest. Um, it's a little bit like the giving pledge, you know, where these billionaires, this is Gates and Buffett and that whole crowd are giving at least half of their half of their money uh, upon their death to to causes. And, you know, Buffett giving 95 percent kind of stuff the, 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 there are these opportunities to to profit the world by giving to to the solution of some of these problems. It's right there in front of us when you when you see it correctly. So that's I just wanted to add this strengthen that particular perspective. Um, it's this present here. Uh, there were a couple comments. I would like to read them. Please. Uh, Alex wrote, thank you for such a clear and informative presentation. My daughters work in science and engineering with an interest in sustainability, and they will find all of this information very inspiring and useful. I feel this is an important that we pass this on to the next generation, who after all will be most responsible for bringing all of this into reality and you have done that so thank you i found this very relevant and useful thank you and milia writes we have also been asked by master dk to meditate on channeling money to the work of the hierarchy on sundays and to support the reappearance of the christ in midweek the work to reform industry, innovation, infrastructure, all require vast sums of money. Some of this may require raising taxes for the greater good of the greater number. Uh, 
Thank you for those comments. And you'll note that the links are also to the many things that have been mentioned. Many of the links are also in the chat box if anyone uh, wants to copy them. And if there's anyone else who would like to share a thought before we go to meditation. Yes, meanwhile, I wanted to also to, to note or, or to support with uh, Sheldon has said and here in these comments about uh, financial infrastructure, how, how much money we have at disposal. But at the same time, it's not that easy to, to, to clearly find uh, nowadays, uh, uh, at least in developing countries. Uh, you say, well, I, I do have some money to invest. I want to invest it clean, uh, in a clean way to support uh, these, uh, these solutions, for example. And uh, we still have work to do in that sense, no? in terms of implementation of better financial architecture. Uh, because probably in the United States it's easier no? or in Europe to discern which projects uh, have a, which uh, origin. So, well, still work to do there. I just want to, sorry for all this input here, but um, say one more thing directly what Martin's talking about. Um, you know, to get these, get the resources, you might say, whether it's ideas or money, into various places does require a, a human structure, a group that can work together to make this thing happen. I think back to Mohammed Yunus years ago, work that he did. But we also read an article this morning by David Brooks, New York Times columnist, talking about a, something good happening in America today. And in a nutshell, in two sentences, he's he's been he's talking about a group that's focusing in Spartanburg, South Carolina, on children and um, how they can help children move well from birth to at least career time. And what they've done is they pulled together a whole number of people who are interested in this particular topic. It's chiefs of police, it's mayors, it's it's the, um, you know, it's principals, it's all different kinds of folks. And they have data, they gather data about about where things stand. And they work together to, to, to not only to solve the problems, but to be channels for people to donate uh, for this. And it's, it's, he said, there's a number of things that started in Cincinnati some, some years ago, striving together. And it's spread into to a number of it makes your point out earlier about local communities. These are not so small, Spartanburg, South Carolina, but this is this is what's happening. So I think we need to look for ways that those those communities can be created. And this the people who come together are from all from the various parties. It's we have a we have a we have something that we all believe needs to be better. Could be the environment. In this case, it is children, children's education. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sheldon and Martin. And back to you, Alexander. Before we go to meditation, I want to read one more comment uh, that just came um, from Chilean. In Great Britain, I have been disappointed by the long time scale required by some industry to respond to problems. The point at the time is one of people dying of uh, anaphylaxis after eating takeaways food, which was wrongly labeled. I think action should be as early as possible, not until forced by law or overwhelming public opinion. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. So I suggest we bring all that's been shared in our circle into group center and meditate on implementation of the sustainable development goal number nine. So over to you, Martin. And we have uh, 10 to 15 minutes to meditate and wrap up the webinar. 
Thank you, Alex. Dear friends, let us then prepare for meditation. Standing on the ground, opening hearts, standing as a group. This meditation, used at the time of the new moon, given by the Tibetan master, strengthening the hands of the new group of world sadness. Let's start with this mantra. I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. We recognize our place as a group within the heart center of the new group of world servers. We mentally extend a line of lighted energy towards the spiritual hierarchy, the planetary heart center. To the Christ, the heart of love within the hierarchy. towards Shambhala, where the will of God is known. Let us hold our mind focused for a few moments on the planetary role of the new group of world servers. Mediating between hierarchy and humanity. Responding to hierarchical impression and meditating the plan into existence.
Let us now reflect on the seed thought. Sustainable Development Goal number nine. Build resilient infrastructure. Promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization. and foster innovation. Precipitation. Visualize the precipitation of the will to good, essential love throughout the planet. From Shambhala. through the planetary heart, the hierarchy. Through the Christ. The new group of world servers. through all men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world. And finally, through the hearts and minds of the whole human family. Consider the many ways in which the power of the one life and the love of the one soul are working, are working out in the world through members of the new group of world servers. So building the thought form solution to world problems. Distribution. After great invocation is sounded, visualize the irradiation of human consciousness 
with light and love and power. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the real wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the focalizing triangle. We continue working together. We invite you to join our coming webinars on October 23rd. Please join the Scorpio Solar Festival webinar with uh, Yves Schumann from France, focusing the CC group of trained observers. And on November 10th, the Scorpio New Moon webinar, continuing our work focusing on sustainable development goals. This time we will focus on goal five, life on land. Thank you.